Okay, our last chapter for our midterms is composed of biomolecules. Okay? Biomolecule, also called as biological molecule. It is any of numerous substances that are produced by cells and living organisms. Biomolecules have a wide range of sizes and structures and perform a vast array of functions. There are four major types of biomolecules. These are carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Let us start with the first, which is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are sugar molecules. Along with proteins and fats, carbohydrates are one of the three main nutrients found in foods and drinks. Your body breaks down carbohydrates into glucose. Glucose or blood sugar is the main source of energy for your body's cells, tissues, and organs. What is the chemical composition of carbohydrate? Okay. Carbohydrates are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and have a general formula that approximates CH2O. They are polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones or form polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones when hydrolyzed. Carbohydrates occur as monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Okay, now let's talk about the first, which is monosaccharides. It is also called as simple sugar. A carbohydrate consisting of one sugar unit. The common examples of simple sugars or monosaccharides are glucose and fructose. Both of these monosaccharides are referred to as hexoses since they have six carbons. Okay, These are the building blocks for the synthesis of polymers or complex carbohydrates. Okay, Examples of monosaccharides include glucose, fructose, galactose, ribose, and deoxyribose. Okay, now let's move on with disaccharides. Disaccharides is also called as double sugar. Any substance that is composed of two molecules of simple sugars or monosaccharides, which is linked to each other. Okay, disaccharides are crystalline water-soluble compounds. Okay, examples of disaccharides include sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Okay, now let's move on to oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides are carbohydrate chains containing 3 to 10 sugar units, not relatively abundant in the diet when compared to other more common carbohydrates like those in disaccharide category. Okay, the functions include cell recognition and cell binding. Good source of oligosaccharides are blueberry, pear, watermelon, and nectarine from the fruits, and garlic, spring garlic, leek, white onion, and scallion from the vegetables form statistically significant clusters rich in oligosaccharides. Most fruits contain low amounts of fructo-oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides are classified into subclasses based on the number of monosaccharide molecules that form when one molecule of the oligosaccharide is hydrolyzed. Examples include raffinose, stachyose, and verbascose. Now let's talk about polysaccharides. Polysaccharides is a carbohydrate that can be decomposed by hydrolysis into two or more molecules of monosaccharides. Consists of a single type of simple sugar, which is homopolysaccharides, or two or more sugars, which is heteropolysaccharides. The main functions of polysaccharides are structural support, energy storage, and cellular communication. Okay, what are the examples of polysaccharides? These include cellulose, chitin, glycogen, starch, and hyaluronic acid. Now, let's move on to our second, which is lipids. Lipids is any of various organic compounds that are insoluble in water. So lipids are insoluble in water because they are fats, diba? Lipids includes fats, waxes, oils, hormones, and certain components of membranes and function as energy storage molecules and chemical messengers. 
This is a family of organic compounds composed of fats and oils. Molecules yield high energy and are responsible for different functions within the human body. Oily or greasy nonpolar molecules stored in the adipose tissue of the body are lipids. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about the lipids in the human body. Okay, lipids in the human body. Some hormones are made up of lipids. These hormones induce responses in target tissues, whereas others influence the behavior of cell surface, receptors, and or serve as second messengers. For example, they are formed as part of the cellular response to extracellular agonists and directly affect protein kinases, ion channels, and other systems that govern cell behavior. Okay, fats is a subgroup of lipids called triglycerides. It encompasses molecules such as fatty acids and their derivatives, including tri, di, monoglycerides, and phospholipids, as well as other sterol-containing metabolites such as cholesterol. Okay, so lipid profile in human body includes triglycerides, total cholesterol, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, and low-density lipoprotein cholesterol. Let's talk about triglycerides, a type of fat found in your blood. When you eat, your body converts any calories it doesn't need to use right away into triglycerides. These are stored in your fat cells. Later, hormones release triglycerides for energy between meals. Okay, the normal range of triglycerides in our blood is below 200 milligrams per dl. Okay, now let's move on to total cholesterol. Is the measure of the total amount of cholesterol in your blood. The normal value is under 200 mg per dl. Now let's talk about HDL or the high density lipoprotein. It is the good cholesterol. Bakit to tinatawag na good cholesterol? It is considered as good cholesterol because it transports fats away from the heart, okay? And it absorbs cholesterol and carries it back to the liver. The liver then flushes it from the body, okay? HDL can lower your risk for heart disease and stroke. Why? Because it transports fats away from your heart, okay? HDL that falls within the range of 40 to 59 milligrams per DL is normal. But if it is higher, it is better. Kasi why? It is a good cholesterol naman. So when your blood increases HDL, it's okay. Because it is considered as good cholesterol. Okay? Now let's talk about LDL or low-density lipoprotein. LDL is considered as bad cholesterol. Because it makes up most of your body's cholesterol. High levels of LDL cholesterol raise your risk of heart disease and stroke. Okay. The normal range for LDL in our blood is below 130 mg per DL. Okay, now let's talk about nucleic acids. Nucleic acids is naturally occurring. Chemical compounds that serve as the primary information carrying molecules in cells. They play an especially important role in directing protein synthesis. It is a long molecule that made up of smaller molecules called nucleotides. There are two main classes of nucleic acids which are deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA and your ribonucleic acid which is RNA. What is deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA? It is the molecule that contains the genetic code of organisms. This includes animals, plants, protists, archaea, and bacteria. DNA is in each cell in the organisms and tells cells what proteins to make. It contains the instructions needed for an organism to develop, survive, and reproduce so that is your dna okay each organism has a unique dna all dna is composed of different codes and it differs from one individual to another individual now does twins have the same dna makeup the answer is 
that identical twins share DNA code with each other. So they have the same DNA. This is because identical twins were formed from the exact same sperm and egg from their father and mother. While in contrast to fraternal twins or unidentical twins, they are formed in two different sperm and two different eggs. So they have different DNA. Okay, malinaw ba? Ang meron lang parehas na DNA is yung identical twins, which is formed with the same egg and sperm. While the twins na hindi naman identical, they are formed from different eggs and different sperm. They have different DNA codes. Okay? Let's move on to RNA or ribonucleic acids. RNA is a copy or a transcription of DNA. A molecule similar to DNA and unlike DNA, RNA is single-stranded. An RNA strand has a backbone made of alternating sugar or ribose and phosphate groups. It is attached to each sugar that is one of four bases. Okay, these sugars include adenine, uracil, cytosine, or guanine. Okay? Now, let's move on to proteins. A protein is naturally occurring. Extremely complex substance that consists of amino acids residues joined by peptide bonds. Proteins are present in all living organisms and include many essential biological compounds such as enzymes, hormones, and antibodies. Protein uses amino acids to build and repair muscles and bones to make hormones and enzymes. They can also be used as an energy source. Okay, let's talk about enzymes. Enzymes is a substance that acts as a catalyst in living organisms, regulating the rate of which chemical reactions proceed without itself being altered in the process. Okay, what is a catalyst? When we say catalyst kasi, it is a substance that increases the rate of chemical reaction without itself undergoing any permanent change. Okay? The biological processes that occur within all living organisms are chemical reactions and most are regulated by enzymes. Common enzymes in the body include lipases, which is a group of enzymes that help digest fats in the gut, while amylase helps change the starches into sugars. Amylase is found in saliva. Okay, maltase also found in saliva. And it breaks sugar maltose into glucose. Okay, maltose is found in foods such as potatoes, pasta, and beer. Trypsin, on the other hand, naman, is found in the small intestine that breaks proteins down into amino acids. And we have lactase, also found in the small intestine, that breaks lactose, the sugar in milk, into glucose and galactose. We also have acetylcholinesterase that breaks down the neurotransmitter acetylcholine in nerves and muscles and we also have a helicase that unravels a dna as we have encountered on our previous topic and the last is dna polymerase that synthesizes dna from deoxyribonucleotides we have more enzymes in the body but these are the most common okay now let's move on with hormones Hormones are chemical substances that act like messenger molecules in the body. After being made in one part of the body, they travel to other parts of the body where they help control how cells and organs do their work. For example, insulin is a hormone that made by beta cells in the pancreas. Okay, let's talk about the six important hormones and their roles in your body. Actually, there are a lot of hormones in our body, but these six important hormones are the most problematic hormones in patients, okay? Let's talk about the T3 and T4. These are the two thyroid hormones that are produced in your thyroid, okay? Your thyroid regulates your metabolism, which means it plays a role in digestion, hunger, and your overall energy level. Your thyroid can make too much hormone, which is called hyperthyroidism, or it can make too little, referred to as hypothyroidism. Okay, hypothyroidism is more common than hyperthyroidism. 
Okay. Number two is melatonin. Several hormones help to control your sleep or wake cycles or your circadian rhythm. One of them is melatonin. Sunlight prevents the production of melatonin, which is secreted by your pineal gland. As it gets dark at night, your body makes more melatonin and you get sleepier. Your computer, cell phone, and TV all reduce the amount of melatonin you produce. So either use blue blocking glasses at night or don't use these devices 1 to 2 hours before bedtime. Hindi na kayo nagtaka, no? When you open your applications such as TikToks, di mo na mamalayan, nawawala na yung antok mo until maya-maya alauna na. ba? Because your cell phones inhibits the production of melatonin. Okay, number three, progesterone and testosterone. Okay, we are very much familiar with these two. Okay, these two hormones are sometimes called female and male hormones because progesterone is mostly produced in the ovaries and testosterone is mainly produced in the testicles. Mo both hormones are involved in reproduction. When women don't have enough progesterone, they have irregular menstrual cycles and experience headaches or sudden mood changes, and more importantly, loss of sleep. Men with low levels of testosterone may have a low sex drive that they lose hair, feel fatigued, and lose muscle mass, among other symptoms. So our friends from LGBTQ uses conversion therapy wherein they use either testosterone or progesterone to correct their sexual orientation if you want to be feminine like you use progesterone and if you want to be masculine like you use testosterone okay now let's talk about cortisol stress both short-term and long-term triggers certain processes in your endocrine system. For example, in the classic fight-or-flight response, your body makes both cortisol and adrenaline. When you are under long-term or chronic stress, your body continues to make cortisol and other stress-related hormones. Chronic stress has been associated with obesity, cardiovascular disease, anxiety, and depression, and of course, a host of other problems. So, cortisol got a hold of your moods. Pag may mood swings kayo, blame it on your cortisols. Number five is insulin. Most everyone knows that people with type 1 and type 2 di diabetes have high blood sugar. The hormone insulin is necessary for the cells in your body to properly use the glucose in your bloodstream. With diabetes, this either little to no insulin or the body can't use the insulin it does have properly. Usually, before a person develops type 2 diabetes, they have pre-diabetes and insulin resistance, which means they have more glucose in their bloodstream than normal because their body is not as sensitive to insulin anymore. The blood sugar is not high enough to be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, but the risk of developing it is much greater. Okay, so meron tayong dalawang uri ng diabetes. One is insulin dependent and the second is insulin independent. Okay? Number six, or the last hormones we are gonna tackle, is estrogen. So estrogen, as menopause approaches, women's bodies produce less estrogen. Estrogen is critical to bone health and having less of it is associated with osteoporosis, a condition in which your bones become porous and much more fragile. So as a woman ages, tsaka nag arise yung problems sa katawan nila because of low in estrogen. Okay. Now our last antibodies. Antibody is a protein made by plasma cells. A plasma cell is a type of white blood cell. In response to an antigen, an antigen is a substance that causes the body to make a specific immune response. Each antibody can bind to only one specific antigen. Okay, our antibodies are mainly composed of IgM, IgG, IgA, IgE, and IgD. That's it. For our discussion regarding biomolecules, 
I hope you have learned something. And remember, on Monday would be our graded recitation. It will serve as a review na because after this is our midterms na. Okay, our midterms is supposedly next week but I think it will be moved to after Holy Week. Okay, on Monday we will be having a graded recitation. Okay, review all the topics from the very very start of our discussion up to this slides and for questions please post them on our themes so others can also see and let's answer your questions okay, okay? good luck and have a happy weekend bye